Crash Bandicoot. It's about time. Do you ever wish you could wipe a few underwhelming sequels from history and pick up where the last good one left off? You know, like what Superman Returns or Terminator Dark Fate tried to do? Well, with Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time, developer Toys for Bob actually pulls off the half-reboot, half-continuation idea. This is a direct sequel to Naughty Dog's original trilogy that concluded in 1998, and this team really gets Crash. It's all the characters and action platforming I loved about the old games, but with a bunch of great new ideas mixed in so well that they feel like they were always supposed to be there. Any Crash game worth its orange fur lives or dies by how fun, challenging, and rewarding its platforming is. And here Toys for Bob has not only recaptured the magic of the original trilogy, but only added to it in new, exciting, and seriously tough ways. Standards like jumping, ground slamming, and spin attacks are all here, but the inventive ways in which Crash 4 forced me to improve on my long-standing skills with this arsenal is a treat. This is true from large-scale decisions like building each level with more objectives to increasingly long and complex platforming sequences. Those make Crash 4's imaginative world some of my favorite of the series. One of the best new ideas comes when the four quantum masks are thrown into the mix. Each of them gives you a power like gravity bending, time slowdown, and more. In some games, those could come off as passing gimmicks, but Crash 4 smartly integrates them into the challenge and flow of some seriously tough levels. And while Crash 4 is difficult, it's also usually great at teaching you its new tricks. That minimizes the feeling of progress by trial and error that comes with some platformers. Even the smallest of additions, like the shadow circle you can see underneath Crash when he jumps, exemplifies this. What could be perceived as making the process too easy really just eliminates most of the guesswork. But don't worry, purists, you can turn it off if you want. Crash. 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 Crash 4 adds in a host of new platforming tricks that amp up the difficulty and give you lots of opportunities to, well, mess up. There's rope swinging, rail grinding, and wall running for starters. None of them is necessarily revelatory, it's nothing we haven't seen before in other platformers, but they're also seamlessly integrated into the rest of his set of tools to ensure timing and precision remain king. The only annoyances were a few brief sections of rail grinding where the perspectives of the camera caused me to mistime a jump over an obstacle. Crash 4 removes about 98% of the guesswork of the old games, which I love, but that last 2% can still burn a bit when you're trying to keep your death count low. And there are plenty of challenges to tackle. Beyond the main story path, there are truly difficult flashback levels, time trials, local multiplayer and co-op, and the impressive inverted mode. Co-developed by the Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled team at Binox, Crash Force Take on Mirror Mode doesn't just invert the look, it adds a host of unexpected twists and challenges that have tested me, even on the levels I've played a dozen times already. Thank you so much. Wait, Tana? But you're... different. One of Crash 4's biggest revelations is in widening its focus to an ensemble of playable characters. Based on the side levels they star in, each of them could easily be the star of their own spin-off game, and I'd play them all in a heartbeat. Cortex uses a long dash and a ray gun that turns enemies into platforms or jelly-like bouncing spots. Tana has a grappling hook that plays into combat, but it also is useful for crate smashing at distances Crash and Coco could never reach. Finally, Dingo Dial can hover, but he can't really jump too high, and he's got some Luigi's Mansion-esque vacuum mechanics that can, for example, suck up and launch a TNT crate to destroy barriers. They're all so different from each other that all kinds of nuanced techniques open up when playing them. The only real downside is Cortex and Dingo Dial's weapons can be a bit tough to aim because there's no target reticle or way to aim with any finesse. You just sort of shoot in the general direction your character is facing. It led to a handful of flub shots on my end, and it's something a full spin-off or additional take on these ideas should consider reworking, but it by no means ruined the fun of these new characters. An important part of what makes Crash 4's levels both readable and fascinating to explore, though, is the sheer level of detail Toys for Bob was able to cram into them compared to the original trilogy. From the frozen tundra of the 1700s, to a New Orleans-esque musical city, and the prehistoric era, these beautiful and memorable worlds showcase Toys for Bob's penchant for adorably animated design and fun bits of detail. It has the look of the Crash Saturday morning cartoon I wished I had as a kid. No, 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 no way. Not in a million years. 
Backing it all up is a soundtrack that changes level by level to match the setting. They're in step with the classic Crash Score's affection for driving, jangly percussion tracks, just molded to fit all the various time periods. And like much of Crash Force Joys, the score has a few delightful surprises of its own. I'm a big fan of the twist on the sound that comes when you strap on any of the quantum masks. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time is both respectful of the challenging platformer series that came before it, while also giving it the modern update it needed in 2020. It's got plenty of new gameplay mechanics, respectable depth of character, and a beautiful look. Its fresh ideas run the gamut from big gameplay additions like playable characters with majorly different playstyles, to extra content like the inverted mode, and even small quality of life improvements like the shadow circle under Crash's jumps. It all now feels as natural to Crash as though they'd been there all along, and it feels so great to pick up from where the wonderful Crash games of the past left off. For more on Crash Bandicoot 4, be sure to watch the devs react to a speedrun of the Crash 4 demo level, and take a look at Crash's launch trailer. And for everything else Bandicoot related, you're already in the right place, IGN.